Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over the concept behind this swimming looping animation that I created here. Let's jump straight into this. So no bells and whistles. I'm going to try and do this in the simplest way possible and you guys can follow along. So let's go ahead and create a sphere. I'm going to make this sphere slightly smaller. And as well, I'm going to come up and create a circle spline. And as well, I'm going to rotate this on its side by 90 degrees and also make it slightly smaller. So the animation is driven from this sphere rotating around this spline. So to align this to our spline, right click on my sphere, go align to spline and drag our circle spline into this. So this has aligned our spline to it. And under the parameters of the tag, you can see we have position here and this is going to control the position on our spline. So first of all, let's make sure our scene is set up at 250 frames. You can change this at the bottom. And it's really important because we're actually going to be rendering out only frame 125 to 249 to create a looping animation. But for now, we need all 250 frames. So on frame zero, I'm going to go into our spline tag and change, uh, turn on the little button next to our position to save the keyframe. And then jumping forward to frame 250, I'm going to change this to 100% and then click our little keyframe button again to save it. And now we have this sphere that goes around our spline. One issue is this is moving around in a spline animation. So it's actually uh, smoothing it out. So it speeds up slightly. To change this, I'm going to go shift F3 and then click on our align to spline at the top. I can change this to a linear animation. So then this just keeps the sphere the same speed the whole way around. Now, back in this animation I had here, these uh, little ducks actually bobbed up and down slightly. So all I did was this was edit uh, the spline that they're on. So let's go ahead and do this quickly. If I go to the top right, you can change your view here. I'm going to go to my top view and then click on our circle and then pressing C to make it editable. I'm going to go to our points and we want to create uh, two more points or four more points actually. So right click. You actually have to right click uh, in this little viewport here and we want line cut and then go back to our top viewport you can use the grid to line this up so i'm going for the uh not the 45 degree angle here in the top right holding shift to keep it to 45 degrees i'm going to cut through this section here and it's going to create two more points and again doing this the opposite direction it's going to create two more points Cool. Now grabbing the points that we just created, let's find them. So it's these four points here. I'm just going to go ahead and move them down slightly. So then when this sphere goes around our spline, you can see it's going to bob up and down slightly. Cool. So we actually need two of these spheres. So I'm going to go ahead and group these. So Alt G to group them. And this is number one and control drag. We're going to create a second one and name this one number two. So in number two, I'm going to grab the circle spline, rotate this by 180 degrees. So now we have two spheres bobbing up and down in their little circles. And we can go ahead and create the water and start with the water animation now. So the water is created using a plane. So let's go ahead and grab a plane make this slightly bigger so it fits our circles and we need to go ahead and add some subdivisions to this so you want to start out quite small just so you can see the animation running so I'm going to go 150 by 150 but we can up this later when we want to smooth the animation out so we need a plane deformer and this plane is spelled slightly different so if I shift C and type in P L A I N this is a plane MoGraph deformer I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put this underneath my polygon plane. So a plane deformer, you can tell it to move uh, an object based on its polygons or points in certain directions. So if I go to my deformer, I'm going to tell it to move my points. And now you can see our plane is actually shifted in one direction here. And this is because under our plane deformer, under parameters, it's moving it in 100 in the Y direction. Now we don't want this. We actually wanted to move it in our Z direction. So you have to eye this up slightly. We're going to move it minus in our Z direction just so it's like near the bottom of our spheres. So minus 30 looks good for me. 
you can see how far it is down. And we actually only want it to move down by minus 30 where our spheres are. So we need to create some fall offs for this. So in our plane deformer, under fall offs, we can go ahead and drag both our spheres into this. So now you can see this minus 30 is only being applied around our sphere here. So this looks quite messy and as well, it's only affecting one of the spheres. So let's go ahead and make our top sphere here. We need to add this under blending. So now it's affecting both of these, but as well on both our spheres, we want to change this mode from points to volume. So this actually tightens up this radius around our sphere. So if I go ahead and play this, it's going to be following our spheres around and creating this volume around our spheres. Awesome. So let's go ahead and add some more things to this because we have need to create the ripples uh, and delay effects on this. So back in our fall offs, I'm going to turn off clamping on the right here. This is enable disenable value clamping. We're going to turn this off and we're going to go ahead and add our first deformer. So under delay here, we're going to add a freeze deformer. So what a freeze deformer does is it's going to create uh, the movement and it's going to keep the movement consistent as our little spheres go around in a circle. But at the moment, this is just leaving a little hole here. So we actually need to add this to our previous animation. So if we add this, it's now here, but it's actually leaving these little holes behind at the start. So to get rid of this, you need to click this little clear button here. And you might have to do this a few times depending if you see this come up again. So if I click this, it's removed our little holes it's left behind. So under mode, I'm going to change this to grow. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a ripple effect as soon as our spheres move. You see, it's going to push it outwards. Now, one thing to notice about this is our grow, this little hill it's creating is very steep. If you imagine water probably wouldn't be this steep unless there's a great force pushing it. So to remove this hill here, I'm going to change our radius out slightly. So I'm going to increase this to like 40 and this is going to smooth this out. Cool. Now this is looking a bit wild at the moment and not exactly what we want. So to tie these two animations together, we need to add a solid. So here it says solid. We're just going to click this and add this to our scene. So our solid is going to tie all these animations together, but we need to change a few things. First of all, our solid blending option, I'm going to change this to add. And then we're going to change our opacity down to 51%. You want really anything above 50%, you'll have to eye it up and have a look. Cool. So we need to add some ripples to this now. And to add the ripples, we're going to use a delay deformer. So where it says freeze, there's a little drop down box and we want delays. And we're going to grab this delay above my freeze, but below my solid. Now, there's two modes we're going to use for delay. So we're actually going to have two delays. The first mode we're going to use is smoothing. And this is going to basically create uh, a trail behind our little uh, spheres that we have here. And now this, this delay is actually being affected by the freeze that we had. This is why it has the little like fall off. You imagine here, it's creating this hill here. This is because of the freeze. So it's all starting to tie together now. So this delay, I'm actually going to set to subtract. And there's a reason for this. It's because if you imagine it's pushing it down, I'm going to tell it to push upwards instead by changing this to subtract. See, so now it's been pushed upwards. So now it's leaving this like little wave behind our sphere. So you can go ahead and change the opacity of this as well. So this just changes how strong this is. So I might just reduce it slightly. Say like... 80%. And let's go ahead and add another delay. Again, we want this delay above our previous one. And we're going to go ahead and leave the blending option on this one as normal. Now this delay is going to be set to spring. And what spring does is anywhere that an object goes up, it's going to come back down. And then again, it will go up again and then down and up. You get the idea. It's a spring. So because I'd raised this section up it's going to then push this section back down and again raise it up again and you start to get these ripples following behind this animation again we can go ahead and change the opacity of this i might reduce this to like 70 percent and this is where you start to really have to play with the nitty-gritty of things like i might have to reduce my other delay down to say like 50 percent just to start to clean these things up so let's go ahead and play this 
So this is starting to look pretty good. We have like these uh, ripples following our sphere now. So this is where you can start to come in and look at how the things are starting to look and interacting with each other. So my spheres are probably a little far out of the ground here. So I might actually go to parameters on my plane and just reduce this to minus 25, bring our plane up a bit slightly. So then it's actually clamping around the edges of this a bit more. So this is looking good. So this is where you'd go ahead and add some more subdivisions in. So I'm going to increase this to 200 and 250. And this will make our animation look a bit better, but also slow my viewport down a lot. Again, because I'm recording, this is just mainly my issue. Hopefully it's a bit faster for you guys. Anyway, so we have this. Now, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm getting ready to render this out. Let's quickly talk about why we want to have the starting and ending frames and how we can cache this object out. So we want to cache it, but there's two ways of caching this in Cinema, using the character cache tag or the point tag. Unfortunately, neither of them work with our plane deformer. So we actually want to head, go ahead and say this as an alembic object, but an alembic object is uneditable. It's basically creating an animation baked into an object that we can't edit. So we need to go ahead and make sure this looks as smooth as possible before we do that. So let's go ahead and grab a subdivision surface. I'm going to put this subdivide, our plane in our subdivide, and this is going to smooth some things out. And you can come down and start to look how this is looking. So it does look a little bit weird. You guys might have to play around with this. Uh, you can also go ahead and add a smooth deformer to this. So let's add a smooth to our plane. And again, this smooths it out a bit more. You may want to increase the subdivisions a bit more as well. Maybe even like up your subdivisions on your plane to like 300 by 300. And your animation might like start to look pretty good. Anyway. So, how are we going to cache this object? So, one way of caching this object that will actually work with a plane deformer is by making an alembic object. So, to do this, I go File, Export, Alembic, ABC file. And this is basically going to bake the animation into the object as a separate file. So, if you click this, you'll get a load of options here. You have to first of all choose how you want to save this. And you get a load of options. Make sure you render from frame 0 to frame 250. And then go ahead and turn on subdivision surface here. So this is actually going to affect the plane that we had because we put this in a subdivision. And when you click OK, this might take like 5-10 minutes. It's going to go ahead and bake this object out. So I'll be back when it's done. You can see it's showing it in the bottom left here and it's created a little export object here. So we have our Alembic file done. So if I go up to a file at the top and say merge object and go ahead and find this object that we have here, we're going to import this in. And it's basically going to add everything that was in our scene back into our scene again. So you can see the one and two we have at the top here are actually our spheres. So I can go ahead and delete these because we already have them. And then our subdivision surface here is actually our baked animation. So let's go ahead and hide the old one. So turning off our previous plane, you can see here we have our animation. And this animation allows us to scrub through it completely without any delay because it's baked the animation into this. Cool. This is looking a little rough around the edges. Obviously, you guys will go ahead and do this how you want. I bake this out in quite low polygons to save time. Anyway, so why do we want to render this out in the way that we are with only 125 frames to 249? Let's get into that. So if we go to the start of our animation, these spheres are going to start moving. And to start off with, they don't have any trails behind them. If you're going to create a looping animation, then you need the start and end frame to be exactly the same. So if we skip forward to 125, you can see our spheres are in our starting positions with the trails already created because they've gone ahead and done a previous loop. So frame 125 is going to look exactly the same to frame 250, you see? So we're going to render this out from 125 to 249. The reason we're skipping the final frame is because the frames at the start and the end look exactly the same. So if you include frame 250, it will actually look like your scene or your animation pauses for a second. So to remove that pause at the end, we're going to go ahead and remove the final frame. In our render settings, if you're rendering this out as a uh, image sequence, just make sure you have a manual setup at frames 125 to 249. Awesome. So all I did for this was create a camera and level this camera out. And this camera was simply just pointing down, looking at the top of my scene like this. 
and then I went ahead and you can see the animation plays and you get a nice top down view of this. Cool. So I'm quickly going to show you how to import this as an image sequence and how it actually loops. So let's jump straight over to Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop with the previous render that I did. I didn't want to go and have to render this out again. So I'm going to show you with this. So we have frame 125 here and then 249 is our finishing frame. If we go ahead and click the first one and click image sequence, as long as these are all named correctly in a hierarchy order, so go from one to the next one to the next one to the next one, uh, it's going to import this as one sequence. So let's go ahead and press open, che uh, check your frame rate. And here is the sequence we have. If you don't have the timeline at the bottom here, you want to go windows and then timeline. But to show you this loops, I'm going to go ahead and grab my layer here. That's actually our video duplicate this layer. So now we have two of this layer. You can see here we have two videos and I'm quickly going to jump to the end of this and just play it. And you'll see this actually loops pretty much perfectly. So it goes straight into the next one and like perfectly matches. So yeah, this was how I created this looping like water animation I created here. Um, just for some of you guys to work on, maybe think of this, you can do this with like sand, uh, like Play-Doh. It doesn't have to be water. I think it looked really good with like snow or sand. So yeah, hopefully you guys create something cool with this. Uh, thank you for watching.